Do you have a victory garden? You may not have heard that term since World War II, but I'll tell you this, any garden that grows anything is a victory. <laughs> so I consider it completely victorious when I get mine growing. What I want to talk to us today though about is a few ways that you can take that wonderful garden that you've started, whether it's reaping you a lot of harvest or a little right now, and double your return on your investment in that. All that sweat and blood and tears that you're investing, I want you to get as much nutrition as you can. And I've got some really cool tips you might not have thought of before. So stay with us. I'm standing out in my garden and for some of you it doesn't look that fantastic. To me it's delightful and very victorious when anything grows. But I want to talk us through five different ways that we can intentionally get kind of double for our money for the effort we're putting into our garden. And specifically I'm talking about nutrition. This is going to come in in extra ways in the future when there's an emergency and you're so thankful for every thing you can possibly squeeze out of that garden nutrition wise but you need to learn right now when there is no emergency when you do have Google and books that you can find and people that you can talk to about some of this to get educated on the front end but let's talk through some of these things number one go up not out now, I have a relatively small garden. Incidentally, I have a big yard and I could easily have stretched out. But for the amount of work I'm putting into my garden, it helps when I have these trellises that allow anything that's vining, like the cucumbers and the squash and whatever else, to go ahead and travel upward rather than out. That allows me to literally, if I wanted to, plant double the amount of food for the amount of square footage I have to work with. That's pretty cool. So. That's not my tip number one is try to go up as much as possible on trellises and whatever you've got around you that allows those plants instead of spreading out to spread upward. Okay, next, you're going to want to look for superfoods to grow. If you're new at gardening or maybe you've been doing this a long time, if you're going to get the most bang for your buck, why not grow the, the plants that are notorious for being superfoods? Like behind me, I have beets growing. I have sweet potatoes. Those are notorious for being a superfood. Garlic and ginger, those are things that you can grow and, and be so thankful for all year round. Turmeric is another great one. And for each of us, I know we're all in different growing zones. So just check what superfoods you can grow in your zone. Don't get too experimental because you might regret putting a lot of effort into something that doesn't grow in the zone that you live in. All right, number three, this is one of the most amazing secrets that people just plain forget. But back in World War II, when our grandparents were doing this, they knew all about it. And that was that many of the plants we grow in our garden, you can harvest not just the part that is harvestable, but the top part as well, or the stems, or the, or the blossoms that grow on it, or, or the roots, whatever. I wanna give you a couple of examples, and as I have to, um, thin the many of the different plants but specifically today I need to thin these carrots they are absolutely out of control and these are rainbow carrots so they're going to be all different colors I love to be creative um, but they need thinned and you thin them a couple of times through the year and the first time you want to make sure you've got a thin a thumb width between each plant so that they have room to expand and then later you'll come back and thin them a second time well, when you do that, you're going to be pulling up a whole lot of baby carrots and a whole lot of their tops that are so healthy and beautiful. I want you to know every one of those is edible. <laughs> Someone probably sometime in the past has told you they're not, but do your own research and Google it and you'll find that the t carrot tops are incredibly nutritious. Also, you may know that in some countries, sweet potatoes are grown, not even for the potato under the ground. They're grown because the top of the sweet potato is so healthy, so incredibly nutritious, that that's the part they like best. They just want all the blossoms and the leaves. So consider incorporating those into your diet as well. Some of the other ones you can eat are squash, um, zucchini. All of those are edible leaves and they're fantastic and very high in nutrition. One you don't want to eat is cucumber leaves and cucumber stems. Those are not nutritious. They're in fact poisonous to some degree, not terribly 
life-threatening, but they are poisonous. So don't be eating the cucumbers, but do your research on whatever you're growing and learn that, hey, instead of throwing off the top of the beets when I harvest them, I can use those beet tops, uh, the greens of them, just like I would Swiss chard or spinach or one of those. So it's worthwhile to look into what you're growing and what you can use of the plant besides just that one part that you thought was harvestable. Next, double plant as much as possible. One of the very first things, if you're new at gardening, you'll find that the radishes come up very first. In fact, even if you don't like radishes, which I'm really not, I'm really not a fan of myself, but I grow radishes every year because they give me that first spring of uh, foliage that comes up. And then uh, the first harvest comes just a couple of weeks after you've put those little tiny seeds on top of the soil. It's amazing. But they all kind of come to a harvest at the same time. You'll go ahead and pull them up. And so in all of the buckets that I initially grew radishes, I harvested the radishes. I kept the radish tops because they are completely edible and I dehydrated those and powdered them so I can throw them in all kinds of soups and fun things in the, in the menu inside. But then I planted tomatoes in the same pot that those radishes were. It's always early enough in the spring that you should be able to just plant something else right in that spot. And there are so many other plants you can do that with. In fact, there's a whole suite of plants that you can grow through the colder months. And I would encourage you, whatever zone you're in, check out and find out what you can grow. Commonly, that's going to be things like the Swiss chard or the uh, cabbages and broccoli and those things like that. You want to check into it. Turnips grow great. Uh, through the cold months. So find out what you can plant in the hot months. When those are harvested, immediately seed them again with what can grow through the cold months and you'll reap a double harvest that way. I'm to tip number five now and this one is my ultimate favorite, although I am going to want you to stick around for a bonus tip at the end of this. Tip number five though, my favorite one is this, strategically allow weeds to grow in your garden. The reason I say this is because it is so much fun to learn what you can forage in your own yard. In fact, you've seen many of our episodes where we've covered so many of the different front yard forageables. Well, all those weeds are going to come up in your garden naturally. Let me name just a few that I allow to grow in mine. So the wood sorrel takes over and grows almost everywhere. On the tops of bales, in the ground, you name it, wood sorrel will gladly make its home. And among my spinach and arugula and um, Swiss chard, it just has made a huge home there. Well, I let it grow. Partly because it tastes like lemon, it's perfect to be thrown in with the salads and such, or I can harvest it separately and make that wonderful wood sorrel lemonade that you've seen us make before. So it has multiple reasons I let it grow. It's one of my favorites. Another one is violets, wild violets. They grow all over the yard in the spring with their beautiful little purple flowers. Well, in the garden they make their home as well, and they can get pretty beefy in size, I'll tell you that. So I have had to thin them out, but when I thin them out, all I do is if I don't have something to make with them right then, I throw them in the dehydrator so that they are ready for later. Some people like to freeze them, some people just make them instantly into some recipe like pesto or one of their favorite uh, soups or things that calls for greens, they throw them in there. One of my favorite things to do with them though is this, and there are so many different ones you can do this with. Think of it, any of these weeds that are edible that have a large leaf to them, that would include plantain, which is one of my favorite and is so healthy. I let it grow in the garden. These big leaves that you get, you can do just what you do with kale chips. Some of you have looked up that easy recipe of throwing kale into the oven and making wonderful, delicious kale chips with a little bit of spices on them. A lot of these garden greens don't have a whole lot of flavor to themselves. And yes, I know the heat is going to take away from some of their nutrition, but it's still a fantastic way to incorporate, incorporate them into your menu. Some of the others I let grow are the wild strawberries, also the scurvy weed or native wandering Jew, as some call it. All of the wild garlic and chives, those get to stay in the garden. 
and I even allow a few of the poke plants. I don't know if you have that in your area, but here they grow so prolifically. It's just exhausting to try and keep pulling them up, but I do allow a few of them to grow as long as they're not getting in what the way of others. And of course, no garden is complete without sunflowers. <laughs> they are so wonderful to have and so nutritious. I probably haven't mentioned all of them, but I just want to encourage you, do the research, see what grows wild in your garden, and if it's edible and nutritious, man, you just might want to leave it there. The last bonus tip that I have for you is always go organic, because if you start spraying pesticides around or any kind of chemical, you're going to probably regret it. You might forget where you sprayed it or what you sprayed it on. It's just going to make it a very difficult situation for you and it will be unhealthy whenever you try to come to a harvest. So use things like diatomaceous earth. I know that the, um, the stink bugs have just wreaked havoc or the squash bugs have wreaked havoc on my squash plants and cucumbers this year already. I don't mind going organic by getting rid of them through using things like diatomaceous earth and yucky smells and cayenne peppers and things like that in the garden rather than the danger of putting chemicals on them and I might reap a bigger harvest but it would be chemically treated and I prefer organic. I think you will too if you start doing gardening this way. All right, now I've given you five and a half wonderful tips. I hope that you will write down below some of your favorite tips that I have not covered. We want to hear from you what you're doing to get a double return on investment for the effort that you're putting into your gardening efforts at your home. Until I see you next time though, will you take the time to share this video with someone you love? Subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already so we can hear from you and you're part of the family. And I want to really quick say a very, very warm thank you to you Patreons, your patrons over on Patreon that have been so faithful to support this channel. God bless you each one. And now to all of you, I say this, go out and this week intentionally be a blessing to someone else. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Before you leave, I want to share with you this beautiful word out of Psalm 57, verses 1 and 2. It's a prayer. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God Most High, to Him who will fulfill His purpose for me. Now go spread the word.